Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Vachi. Uh, I am a research intern at Codelight Labs. Today, I will talk about Zeek Agent. I will mainly discuss its architecture and use cases. So what is Zeek Agent? Zeek Agent is an endpoint monitoring tool that provides visibility into host activities, such as all the currently running processes, file reads and write operation that happened in the past. Zeek Agent uses SQL queries to introspect operating system state, sim similar to OS query, which is another open source endpoint monitoring tool. However, what's cool about Zeek Agent is that it seamlessly correlates Zeek network logs with host events. What it means is that when you see a network flow in Zeek's con log, you can relate that network flow with the process event on the host, which was responsible for that network flow. You can further um, attribute, we can further find out attributes of that process, such as command line argument or user ID of that process. This event correlation between host and network log has a lot of power. Security analysts could leverage correlated event logs to amplify threat detection by writing more enriched detection rules. Um, they could also use these correlated logs to generate high fidelity um, contextual information while investigating threat alerts. So the development on uh, Zeek Agent started in 2018 when Stefan developed an initial prototype of the agent by extending OS query tool with the bindings to connect to, with Zeek Agent and wrote Zeek scripts to correlate host and network logs. But this prototype had certain technical limitation um, that prevented production usage. So um, in early 2000, 2019, Colite hired Trailer Bits to update and improve Stefan's uh, Zeek OS query prototype. Um, however, uh, Colite and Trailobits soon realized that it is more suitable for long-term development to make a standalone agent um, rather than just patching OS query too. So Zeek agent was developed that could operate both in standalone stand stand fashion and with OS query. And in 2020, Zeek agent was open source to support Colite's vision of community development and engagement. So in the rest of the talk, I will first present the architecture of Zeek Agent. Um, then I will discuss how analysts can use the correlated host and network logs to perform after the fact investigations. Um, finally, I will present some initial results related to resource consumption by Zeek Agent on a single machine. So first let's dive into the internals of uh, Zeek Agent. Let's say we have a Zeek Agent running on the end host and we have Zeek uh, running on some other machine or sensor with Zeek Agent plugin installed. When we first run Zeek Agent, it will start its main loop, which will spawn a Zeek connection manager and announce itself to Zeek using broker. After that, the main loop will start publishers. The, these publishers basically collect OS events using default auditing framework that comes with different operating systems. Consumers will then fetch those OS events, wrap them into Zeek Agent's event class object, and um, rewrite those events into um, virtual database in the form of virtual tables. Later, user can schedule SQL query in Zeek script land to periodically fetch events from the end host, um, and the query scheduler in the, um, in the Zeek Agent will periodically run these queries and fetch events from the virtual database and send them back to Zeek. Once these host events arrive at Zeek Agent, Zeek Agent will Zeek Agent plugin will correlate these host events with Zeek network log and store them on disk. In the next few slides, I will discuss three main components of uh, Zeek Agent um, in much more detail. However, before explaining those three components of Zeek Agent, I will first describe why Zeek Agent use SQL to introspect OS, OS state um, of the host similar to OS query. Um, and the reasoning behind that is quite simple. Basically, SQL enables Zeek Agent to use single query to collect host events from different operating systems. Um, this is possible because operating system concepts are shared among different operating systems. Uh, for example, processes, threads, files, and sockets. And the attributes of those concepts are also pretty much same across operating systems, such as PIDs, NTID for process events. 
Um, for example, um, Zeek agent can use this, uh, the SQL query shown on the slide um, to fetch PID um, image path and SQL from process event tables from different operating systems. Further, you can use uh, add constraints on what kind of events you want. For example, we can exclude all the fork process um, events from our query. Now let's see what kind of publisher publishers Zeek Agent currently supports. Um, as I mentioned before, the role of the publisher is just to get OS events. And in Zeek Agent, we use commodity of the shelf auditing frameworks that come with OS as, as these publishers. This allows Zeek Agent to fetch OS, event, OS events in a non-intrusive manner, avoiding any sort of instrumentation or kernel modification on the end host. For Linux, we use audit subsystem that is available in all the kernel versions above 2.6. For Mac OS, we use endpoint security framework and OpenBSM to collect kernel level events. While we are at the publisher, I just want to mention that we are also looking into adding eBPF support in Zeek Agent to collect events on Linux platform. And basically eBPF is a new kernel feature that allows you to monitor kernel functions and it is supposed to be more efficient than audit subsystem. Once the events are fetched from the publisher, Zeek Agent store these events in virtual tables. Um, and Zeek Agent currently supports three kinds of virtual tables, uh, which are process, files, and socket events table. To build the process event table, Zeek Agent currently subscribe to clone, fork, and exact syscalls. From these syscalls, we extract uh, PID, parent PID, ID of the user executing this process, image path of the process executing, command line arguments passed to this process, and the return value of the syscall. Next up, we uh, to build file events table, um, Zeek agent subscribe to open, open at, and create syscalls. These file related syscall gives us P P PID, parent PID, user ID, image path, um, file path, and the inode number. Finally, to build socket events table, Zeek agent uh, um, uh, subscribe to connect and bind syscall. These, sys, uh, these uh, socket related syscalls gives us PID, um, user ID, image path, file descriptor, protocol family, um, local IP address and port, and remote IP address and port. However, there is one problem with the default auditing frameworks. These frameworks only record, record parameters to syscalls and asynchronously push them to user space. So we have partial information related to socket events. For example, um, for connect syscall, we don't have local address and local port. And due to this partial information, um, we will have ambiguity when we correlate host socket events with network flows inside Z. One solution to, uh, one solution to this issue is to use procfs um, and fetch that missing information. Um, however, uh, it could introduce race conditions while probing. So uh, Zeek agent currently don't use, doesn't use uh, procfs. So once we have the host events available inside the Zeek script land, we correlate, um, we correlate them with Zeek network flows. Um, to do this correlation, we will we first keep state of the host events inside Zeek which is basically a table where key is the host ID and the value is vector of SUID, which is a unique ID given to each event, each entry in the socket event table and a four tuple with local address and port and remote address and port. After that, we um, add a handler for connection state remove event. Inside that handler, we've, handler we perform two steps to attribute network flows. First, given a network tuple um, given a network tuple inside Zeek, we extract source and destination IPs, identify host corresponding to these, those IPs. This requires us to maintain a mapping of IP addresses to hosts. Then on the originator side, we match flow destination with socket uh, remote info. And on the responding side, we match socket uh, local info. As you can see that in this uh, matching process, uh, we could introduce um, ambiguity in the final attribution 
such that when we have two hosts with the connectsys call to the same destination IP address and port, our, our correlation will be unambiguous uh, because of the step one. However, the correlation will become vague for the same host with multiple flows to same uh, remote IP and port, uh, but from different source ports. In the case of these uh, way correlation, we list all the candidate socket, host socket events that might be responsible for the network flow in the Zeke's con log. Now let's see how you can use these uh, co uh, correlation capability uh, to perform threat investigations. Um, so like I said before, once we have these correlated network uh, flows with host socket events, we can use the SUID present in the con log that we added to link to the host socket events log. From the host uh, socket event log, we can uh, find out the process um, uh, uh, process responsible for this network flow. And using the process PID, parent PID, and UID, we can further link it to the host process events log to find out command line argument and parent process and image, image path and other attributes of these process. We can also um, we can also link this to host file event log to see if that process created or opened some other files. Now, as you can see, that this um, event linkages can help analysts in a variety of ways. Um, in fact, if you build these linkages recursively, um, you can generate causal graphs. Um, and in these graphs, the vertices will basically represent system objects such as files, sockets, or subjects such as processes. And the edges between these vertices will uh, represent causal dependency relationship, which is syscalls in this case. And security analysts can use these causal graphs to automatically perform uh, root cause analyses uh, or identify impact of the attack. Uh, for example, let's say um, an alert is related to data exfiltration um, was generated by Zeek, um, and uh, you can uh, then the analyst can basically generate the causal graph uh, starting from this alert and to reconstruct the chain of events that led to this um, network flow. And in this case, analysts can use this graph to see that how this whole process was started from, from SSHD uh, to the bash process and what other kind of files that were read, read by these processes. In this case, file.txt was read before making the network, uh, uh, network connection. And since now that we have the capability um, to link events across the host uh, because of Zeek, uh, we can get the full backstory um, where analysts can see that the whole this whole attack was basically started from mal.sh executable that was downloaded using WGAT. Um, and, and, and analysts can also use this graph that how this mal.sh created a bash process and then bash process to SSH. Um, and also what kind of other uh, process uh, was uh, spawned from this malicious process. For example, an ARP scanner was run um, before uh, lateral movement. We can further use these um, uh, causal graph um, to cor correlate alert alerts. For instance, if the download process um, and the ARP scanner process generated threat, threat alerts in your system, you can correlate these those alerts with the de data exfiltration alert that happened later. Um, and these correlations are um, much better than the mere correlation based on timestamps or other heuristics. These are the actual causal relationships. Um, analysts can use these correlated alerts to make better uh, risk assessment or more confidence decision using, during threat investigation. Um, finally, I will discuss uh, what is the cost of running ZK agent on your system. Um, to measure the resource usage of Zeek Agent, we used a VM with two gigabyte of RAMs and two CPUs. Um, and then we simulated several real world workloads using standard benchmarks such as LM Bench and Apache Benchmark. During this one hour engagement, um, Zeek Agent produced um, around 30 MB of uh, compressed logs. 
um, we found that the resource usage by a Zeek agent was quite low, even in these extreme workloads. As you can see on the slide that um, CPU usage remained under 10% while the memory usage stayed below 75N. Um, to conclude this talk, I would like to just say that this um, Zeek agent is still in an initial, initial stages of development. Um, so come work with us on the Zeek agent to design next generation um, end, endpoint monitoring tool. Uh, we have a detection lab fork that automatically creates a three node cluster with a Zeek agent, Zeek and Splunk installed. Um, you, you just need to do the clone of that fork and do Vagrant Hub to play with Zeek agent and um, send some queries using Splunk interface. Um, if you have any questions, feedback or concerns, let us know in the Slack channel for this talk. Um, and thank you so much.